Hey there, my name is Suman and welcome to Purple Pie Studios. This is the lesson three of the After Effects series where we are going to create our very first animation. So if you are new to After Effects and want to create your first animation, then you are at the right place because you don't need to have any prior knowledge to follow along with this lesson. And you can download all the resources of this video from the link in the description or from the link pinned in the comment section. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. So now we are in After Effects. Let's create a new composition. Let's click on this Create New Composition button and let's name the composition. Keeping the resolution as 1920 by 1080, which is a full HD resolution, and the frame rate as 30. And I'm going to keep the duration 10 seconds. And let's keep the background color black and press OK. Now let's import the illustration file. Double click on the project panel and we're going to import this illustration file. Go to import as and click on composition retain layer size. Check create composition and click on import. So first let's check out how to organize your project panel. Right now we only have few compositions and some illustration layers, but it's always a good habit to organize your project panel from the very start. So that when you are sharing your After Effects file with someone else, then he or she might be able to use it without any confusion. And if you are working in a studio or collaborating with a team of artists, then this is the must have skill. So down here in the project panel, you get an option to create a new folder. So I'm going to create a folder, name it composition or simply comp and let's give an underscore so that it always stays at the top. And then I'm going to add another folder, name it AI for Adobe Illustrator files. So I'm going to select this layers icon, which contains all the illustration layers and drag it and drop it inside the AI folder. I'm going to select the composition folder and create another folder to create the folder inside the composition folder. And let's name it underscore render. And I'm going to add another folder inside the composition and name it frames. Let's select the main composition and drag it inside the render and the illustration file composition and drag it inside the frames. Let's select this composition and drag it and drop it in the timeline. So inside the render, we have the main composition, which we are finally going to render. And we're going to do all the animation inside this icons composition. Let's save the After Effects file before moving forward. So to save a file, go to file and you can click on save or you can use the shortcut key control plus S. So press control plus S and browse the folder where you are going to save the After Effects file. Here, I'm going to save the file. Let's name it and click on save. Or if you want to save another copy of this After Effects file, then you can even do save as. So control shift plus S is save as and you can again add another copy. And here you can change the name to version one or something like that and press on save. Let's open the icons composition and let's add a new solid layer for the background. So right click anywhere here in the timeline and go to new and click on solid and you have to name the layer let's name it background and keeping the width and the height same as the composition resolution and press ok and let's place it below all the layers and we're going to lock this layer so that we don't select or edit this layer by mistake now let's start with the animation let's turn off the visibility of these two icons and let's start with animating the FB icon. If you click on this arrow here, you get the transform property. If you click on this arrow here, you get all the transform properties of a layer. Let's start with animating the position property. So if you select the layer and press P, it's only going to open the position property of the layer. So the position property has currently X and the Y values. We're going to split the dimensions. So select the property and right click on it and click on separate dimensions. Here we have the X position and the Y position separated. Let's add a keyframe on the Y position property. For that, click on this stopwatch icon. And here we have added a keyframe in the timeline. So a keyframe in After Effects holds the value of that property in the given time in the timeline. 
For the position property, it holds the x and the y values in pixels. For the skill property, it holds the amount of the skill in percentage. For the rotation property, it holds the value in degrees. For the anchor point, it holds the anchor point position x and y position values in pixels. And for the opacity, it holds the transparency values in percentage. Now let's press P to open the position property only or press U to only open the the properties with the keyframe. Let's jump on to next 15 frame. For that, we can drag this current time indicator and place it in the 15th frame, or else we can click on this time display and enter plus 15 and press enter. And the time indicator has jumped to the next 15th frame. And now we're going to add another keyframe over here. So, to add another keyframe, if you click on this stopwatch again, it's going to remove the keyframes in this property in the timeline. So to add another keyframe, you have to click on this keyframe icon and here another keyframe has been added. Now let's jump to the previous keyframe by pressing the J key in the keyboard and now we're going to move the icon down. So you can either move the icon by clicking and dragging it with the help of cursor but you have to press and hold the shift key at the same time so that it snaps in the same axis or else you can go to the properties and click and drag the value like this and another way is pressing the down key in the keyboard to move it down or you can press and hold the shift key and press the down key in the keyboard to move it down faster. Now when you create at least two keyframes in the timeline, After Effects will automatically create all the in-between frames and this is called the interpolation. And if I drag the time indicator through the timeline, you can see the in-between frames over here. So when you animate any transform property of a layer, it animates with respect to the anchor point. But the opacity property doesn't depend on the anchor point. So let's preview the animation. By the way, the whole area you see over here is the work area. We can reduce the work area by clicking and dragging this work area end and pressing it to another position. Or we can even use the shortcut key in to move the work area end and press B to move the work area start. But when you move the work area end, you have to remember that when we zoom into the timeline, it actually moves the work area end one frame after the time indicator. But when we move the work area start, it moves exactly at the position of the time indicator. Okay, so let's move the work area start at the start and let's place the work area end over here. By the way, when you are animating in After Effects, remember to press Ctrl S in some interval so that it saves your work till that point of time. So if we preview the animation, the animation looks very mechanical and robotic. That's because these are linear keyframes. If we select the keyframes and check out the motion path, by the way, this path you see over here is the motion path. It shows from where it's starting and where it's going to end and which path the object is going to follow. Now, if we zoom into the composition window, we can see there are some dots over here. These are the individual frames. Now, if we drag it here in the timeline, you can see the layer is jumping from one dot to the other. Now, if we select the keyframe and simply press F9, it's going to change it to easiest keyframe. Now, you can see the spacing between the dots have changed a bit. Now, if we play the animation right now, you can see it's more natural. It feels like it's starting slow and then accelerating and then deaccelerating to stop the animation. In the upcoming lesson, we're going to learn about all the different types of keyframes that are available in After Effects, so you don't have to worry about it too much at the moment. Now, let's jump on to next 10 frame and let's add one keyframe over here and let's jump on to next 7 frame and we're going to add another keyframe over here. Now let's jump on to the second frame and we're going to move the layer up by around minus 30 pixels. Let's jump on to the next keyframe and here we're going to move the layer by 8 pixels. So we can select the layer and if we just enter plus 8, you don't have to properly calculate and enter the pixels, you just enter plus 8 or minus 8 here at the end of the number of pixels 
and After Effects is going to do the maths. And here it gets back to the final position. Now, if we preview it, this extra keyframes added a better fill to the overall animation. And what I have done over here is we have added a little bit of overshoot. Now let's animate the scale property of the layer. So press S to open the scale property and add a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch icon. Press U to open the properties with keyframe. And let's jump on to the next keyframe and let's add a keyframe. And here we're going to give the scale 0%. And then we will add another keyframe over here, another one over here. Here we are going to increase the scale by around 6%. And next, we're going to decrease the skill by around 2%. So minus 2. And here it gets back to the final pose. Select the keyframes. Press F9 to easy is the keyframe. Now let's preview the animation. Now to add more detail to the animation, we can even animate the opacity property. So select the layer. To open the opacity property, you have to press T in the keyboard. And let's add a keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. Press U to open the properties with keyframe. And let's jump onto the next frame. And let's add a keyframe over here. And let's jump onto the first frame. We're going to give the opacity completely zero. Let's select the keyframe and press F9 to easily use the keyframe. And here you have an icon pop up. Okay, now to animate the other two icons, you can either repeat the whole process or you can simply copy and paste the keyframes. For the position property, we have separated the dimension. So for this two layers, again, we have to separate the dimension of the position property. By the way, if you want to select a layer, you can click on it. Or if you want to select multiple layers, then first select one layer and then press and hold the shift key and then click on the last layer and all the layers in between are selected. But if you want to select two layers and skip few layers in between, then select one layer, press and hold the control key and then click on the other layer. And right now, both these two layers are selected and this one is not selected. Okay, now we're going to do the same for the position property. So select both the position property by pressing and holding the control key in the keyboard, right click, separate dimensions. Now we're going to copy the keyframes, select both these two layers, control plus V to paste the keyframes. So when you paste the keyframes, it's going to paste the keyframes from the current time indicator. But we want the animation to start from the start of the work area. So select the keyframes and move it and drag it and place it over here. So let's preview the animation. And here you can see all the three icons are animating. So we have pasted only the Y position property of the keyframes. Since we have separated the dimension, it has not affected anything with the X position of any of these two layers. And right now I don't want all the three icons popping up at the same time. We want some delay in each of the icons. So for that, let's select this two layers. Let's move to next three frame and we're going to move the layer and start it from here. Let's again jump to next three frame and let's move this layer and start it from here. And also let's select all the three layers and let's and let's start the whole animation from the second frame. And also let's expand the work area a little bit. Yeah, this one is looking a lot better. What we have done over here is we have just offsetted the keyframes to delay each of the animations from one another. All right, so that is it for this video. In the next lesson, we're going to learn how to render your animation in all the different formats like MP4, AVI, MOV, GIFs, and even PNG sequence. So if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I would be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates. Until then, goodbye.